Okay, this video is going to focus on the next two elements of the, the role and the nature of business within the Australia and the Australian economy. They mean choice in the sense that businesses provide consumers with choice and innovation and the role of business to, to be an innovator within our economy. So choice, I think we can simply define choice as being the act of selecting among different alternatives. Uh, and in society, consumers have freedom of choice. So we're able to choose whatever product we would like to purchase from a business. And we have the opportunity to purchase a variety of products at competitive prices. And it's the businesses who are providing that choice. Um, and the, the more choice available to consumers, the better. Because generally, the, the greater the choice that's available is also going to mean that pricing or the price of those products should be competitive. If there's very little choice, i.e. very little competition in a market, that is generally going to mean that consumers are going to be paying a higher price for uh, those products. And that's what the next point. The more competition there is, the greater the choice that's available to consumers. So we've got these pictures down here of Woolworths and Coles, aren't there just for decoration? They're there to uh, sh show uh, and to think about the fact that Coles and Woolworths are very dominant within our supermarkets and, and other areas. But let's just focus on supermarkets. Because of that dominance, to a large degree, Australian consumers pay a higher price for their groceries than people would pay for similar groceries in other countries, taking uh, equalising things in terms of currency. The reason for that is because the Australian market has been allowed to become relatively concentrated in terms of just in focusing on supermarkets. Um, and we do, studies have definitely shown that Australian consumers pay a higher price for their groceries because there is a lack of choice. You know, we can go to Coles, we can go to Woolworths, and then we can go to Aldi, IGA, and maybe other, Harris Farm, other small stores. But compared to places like the United States, um, the Woolworths and Coles have been allowed to become much uh, larger, less competition, which means less choice, which means ultimately higher prices for consumers. Most businesses usually offer a range of products um, and, and a greater choice to their customers because that is going to help that business increase its profits in the long term. The broader product offer you can offer, it can offer as long as it's not cannibalising existing products, i.e. A, a customer switching out of, um, for example, a customer switching out of Diet Coke to purchase Coke Zero doesn't really help Coke. They want customers purchasing both. Or, and that was, if we talk about Coca-Cola for one moment, when Coke Zero came out uh, a number of years ago, there were some critics saying, well, this is not going to have any benefit to Coca-Cola because customers are just going to switch from one other Coca-Cola product and purchase Coke Zero. They actually found in time that didn't happen. And I think Coke experienced about a 6 or 7% increase in sales as a result of Coke Zero because of the result that they, they had provided additional choice and new customers were purchasing that or they were producing they were consuming sorry additional products we'll have a look at this article in class but it's important to note the role of the australian competition and consumer commission or the ACCC. they're there to ensure that there is an adequate choice in markets and that markets aren't becoming anti-competitive and which is detrimental to us as consumers this is something we'll do in class and a video we'll have a look at in class as well, which leads on to innovation <clears throat> and innovation and choice, I think, are quite closely linked. And it, as it says there, innovation is either creating a new product, service or process, or it's significantly improving an existing one. Research and design or R&D is often a deliberate approach by a business to improve or unearth new products. And businesses spend a huge amount of money on research and development, particularly companies like Google, for example, software companies, mining companies spend hundreds of millions of dollars on research and development or research and design. For a mine, they're trying to innovate by finding a new um, deposit of iron ore or a new deposit of coal. Technology companies are innovating and spending money because they want to come up with the next big thing. In terms of innovation, think about Kodak. Kodak's a business uh, that didn't innovate. They didn't think the digital camera was going to become a popular thing. They had the opportunity in the late 70s, in fact, to introduce a digital camera. Never thought it would become uh, a viable product. They ignored it. Kodak doesn't even exist anymore. Um, Blockbuster. They didn't innovate. They didn't see the, the competition coming in terms of Netflix type business model. They didn't innovate. They stuck to their existing business model and the business doesn't exist anymore. Well, it does, but 
I think in very, very, uh, I think there's 10 stores left in Alaska. In terms of the benefits of innovation, ideas for new products or developments of and improvements to existing products often provide the opportunity for the establishment of a new business or for additional profitability to be achieved by an existing business. And as it says there, sometimes a person has an idea for a totally new product which is satisfies a need that is not presently being satisfied. So think about products that have come about. The Apple iPad, I think, is the classic example. People didn't really think the Apple iPad had a place. They couldn't see what role it was going to play. Um, because people generally had a laptop and a phone, where was this iPad going to sit? Uh, but Apple innovated, they bought it out, and people it found a place in the market. And Apple kind of thought that they knew people wanted that product before people realised they needed that product. And that's that's a hallmark of excellent innovation, is is pre- really predicting what customers want before the customer even realises that they want it. <coughs> the other benefit of innovation is that it often leads to greater efficiency and productivity, both in production and at the customer end. So the customer, the customer is because they're using these new products. What are some downsides to, to innovation or some negatives? Often patents are required, so putting protections on a, a new innovation so that competitors can't come out and copy your product, and they can be quite costly, they involve lawyers, um, and that they can t- take a long time to be, to be approved. The, we mentioned research and development costs previously. Those costs can be significant. Companies like BHP would spend billions of dollars a year on research and development. Now that's obviously at the very little top end of the research and development money spend, but it can be very expensive. Okay, and there's an article we'll have a look at in class in the context of innovation. Okay, in the next video I'll focus on entrepreneurship and wealth.